Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Nuno Costa, and I'll be presenting my paper, co-authored with Professor Rui Marignon and Professor João Paulo Fernandes, that tackles one of the problems that quantum algorithms and quantum software testing will have uh, concerning the assertion of correctness. We look to showcase one solution, which is metamorphic testing, and test it on short algorithm implementations to verify its effectiveness. As for an overview of the whole presentation, I'll firstly guide you through what's the quantum correctness problem and why it is a problem. Um, then I'll talk a bit about uh, metamorphic testing in the classical world and connect it to the quantum world to achieve quantum metamorphic testing. Now I'll briefly talk and tackle Shor's algorithm, uh, which was the algorithm at hand and explain the metamorphic rules we found for it. And lastly, I'll go through the implementation process the results obtained, and some final remarks. So whenever we talk about quantum algorithms, we refer to algorithms that will be by nature more complex. As such, the test out oracle problem, which refers to the difficulty to define what are the proper outputs for a given input, will be harder as well. Methods such as interactive debugging will also be ineffective in the quantum world since measurement implies the collapse of a state and thus the possible destruction of the computation. As such, uh, quantum algorithms seem to be harder to test since two of the most used testing mechanisms on classic classical computing are unfeasible. Metamorphic testing is a mechanism that tries to assert rules or properties for a given program in such a way that the inputs and outputs are closely related. An easy example would be for a search engine, for example, which should obtain less results uh, for the query you know, autonomous car when compared to the results of the query car. This testing mechanism is already used in several fields, such as compilers and health, and its main advantages are the fact that no prior information of the outputs for a given input is needed, and that it depends solely on the properties of the algorithm. As such, uh, metamorphic testing seems like a good fit for quantum testing, even though there are little to no references to it, since it avoids the test oracle problem and the quantum measurement problem. To apply this methodology, we would need to define the rules or properties for the quantum algorithm at hand, construct a circuit that verifies such rules, and run it to check the correctness of the algorithm. However, since a lot of implementations of some algorithms are already proven to be correct, to actually see if this methodology is good, we can add mutations to the code and see if the metamorphic rules detect those changes or those errors. Um, as mentioned previously, we'll focus on Shor's algorithm to verify this methodology's effectiveness. Shor's algorithm tries to find, for a given number n, a value-to-value -value factorization, which basically means two, two numbers that multiply the event. Uh, so Shor's is almost sub-exponentially faster than its best classical counterpart, which is general number Steve, and is of great interest to the quantum computing world since it would help break modern public key cryptography, making RSA and Diffie-Hellman key exchanges obsolete. To define the metamorphic rules for Shor's algorithm, we follow the template-based approach, which is defined in this slide. And after giving the algorithm some thought, we came up with two different rules. The first defines that for a given number Q2 that is factored in Q1 and the prime P, the result of Shor's on Q2, except the result of Shor's on Q1, should include the prime P. The second, the, the second one defines that for a given number Q3, factored in Q1 and Q2, the Shor's of Q3 should equal the union of Shor's results of Q1 and Q2. Having these rules in mind, we can now move forward towards implementation. Two different frameworks were used. Uh, so firstly, we used Kiskit Shor's implementation, given its good doc documentation and ease of access. However, that framework proven to be difficult to handle as the execution fun functioned as a black box without giving any context on the progress or what, what's going on. And it was not easy to control the execution, especially for numbers greater than, than for 35, as execution times were becoming too big. Introducing non-optimized values for the parameter A, which is the parameter of shores, 
would many times lead to the program not returning anything at all. We also couldn't use anything other than a simulator as the number of available qubits at IBM for general users was five, but to factor a number with n bit digits, we would need four times n plus two qubits, which in turn means we couldn't even factor the number one using real computers, real quantum computers. As such, we pivoted to the second option, which was QC engine simulator implementation of source. Although still a simulator, uh, the code was al already readily available, which allowed us to track what was going on more easily, as well as adding cru a crucial part of our project, which was to mutate the source implementation. On the right, we can see a simple pseudocode representation of the algorithm that verifies the first metamorphic rule, which we used in QC Engine Simulator. After running the algorithm, we got results that match what we expected. Um, the metamorphic rule was held for all numbers ranging from 45 to 2045, uh, 245, with varying Q1 and P parameters. As for the mutations, we couldn't actually assert that the algorithm was failing 100% of the time. What we did notice was that when a mutation was introduced, the mean number of iterations needed for the algorithm to output a correct result increased with time. This is due to the fact that the quantum phase estimator step in Shor's algorithm makes the algorithm not deterministic, meaning that it might fail even if the parameters and the algorithm itself isn't correct. As such, the results are not based on past failed tests, but on the number of times the algorithm needed to execute to output a correct solution. Another measurement we had was the runtime of the algorithm. We noticed that this runtime was inconsistent and trustless for n greater than 35, which made our test development harder. This can be largely attributed to the poor choice of the A parameter in Shor's algorithm, or the simple fact that we are running it on a simulator. So to conclude, in this paper, we have approached the quantum correctness problem and evaluated how metamorphic testing can be used as a possible solution. Uh, we have provided evidence that the conceptualized methodology shows promise to be a good way of tackling testing in quantum scenarios, even though further work is needed to as actually assert its validity. For future work, making the properties of the algorithm more granular, that is making the metamorphic rules for the components of the algorithm instead of for the algorithm as a whole, uh, will actually give more control to the testing mechanism and allow us to better assert its validity. It would also be interesting to retry our testing algorithm whenever possible, as quantum volume grows each passing day. Feel free to contact me, me or my co-authors uh, co if you have any questions, and thank you for your attention.